All right, guys, welcome to identifying linear functions. And this is day three. It's going to be guided practice and then independent practice, which means uh, you're going to have homework, but then we're also going to have a quiz on Monday. So uh, once you do your homework, prepare to study for the quiz. <clears throat> All right. Well, the first one we're going to look at is question number nine. And question number nine says it's a predict question. It's the, it says the cost of a school photo package includes $40 for a photo shoot plus the number of photos ordered multiplied by the price per photo. Is this situation defined by a linear function? So predict the answer and then write a graph on an equation on another sheet of uh, write and graph an equation on another sheet of paper to check your prediction. You can use 250 or any other value as the cost per photo. Well, since they tell us well, we can use 250, I think that would probably be a good idea to do that. So that's what we're going to do. So let's look at what we have. The initial value, the initial value is going to be the cost of the photo package, which is going to be $40, right? Plus the number of photos ordered multiplied by the price per photo. So as long as we're multiplying by the same number, we should always get the same change, which means it should be a linear function. So predict the answer would be yes, this is a linear function. It says then write an equation and graph it. So let's take a look what that would look like. If we do that, we the equation, right, is going to be, I gotta lift this up a little bit, right? So we're right here. Our initial value is $40 for the photo, and our rate of change is the cost per picture, which we're going to use the 250 they told us. The equation should be written in y equals mx plus b form, where y is going to be the total cost, m will be the price per picture, x will be the number of pictures bought, and b is the session cost, right? The cost for the photo shoot. So our equation is going to be y is equal to 2.5x, because $2.50 is short for that is 2.5 x plus 40 all right so then what we did is for each for up to 10 pictures i substitute those values into this equation and this is what i came up with for one picture is 42 and a half for two pictures is 45 for three pictures is 47 and a half for four pictures is 50 and so on. And if you check each of those, it's the rate of change from each one to the next will be 250. All right. And then it graphs over here like this, which means it graphs as a straight line. Now we don't connect the dots. And the reason we don't connect the dots is because you can't buy two and a half pictures or four and a half pictures. You can only buy uh, what do you six. Want? I'll do it if you don't mind. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And then, you, since we can't connect the dots, uh, because you can't buy half a picture, the dots remain independent of each other. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. All right, so the next problem, we're looking at Emma and Georgia, and they're going to answer a question about a function. Well, the function says uh, it's wise equal to 10 minus 2x. Emma analyzed this function and said that it is not a linear function because the graph has a negative rate of change. Why Georgia says it is a linear function because it can be written in the form y equal to mx plus b. Right now it's, writing it, it's written in the form of y is equal to b uh, minus mx. All right? But we can write that as 10 plus a negative 2x right because we can change we can change any negative any subtraction sentence to an addition sentence by changing the sign and then changing the value of this uh, second number right and then we can use a community property and then rewrite it as uh, y is equal to negative 2x plus 10 right so the question is who do you agree with and why so let's take a look at what that looks like if we answer those questions. All right, so again, I've drawn this out on paper. So I have y equal uh, 10 minus 2x, and the question is, is it linear or nonlinear? 
Well, let's take a look at the graph, right? If we check the change in y over the change in x on the graph, we get negative 2 over 1. It is a negative rate of change, like uh, Emma said. However, it's a constant rate of change, right? And it graphs as a straight line. That makes it a linear function, right? And this shows how to change y equal to 10 minus 2x into the y equal to mx plus b form, where the rate of change is negative 2 and the initial value is plus 10. And if you'll notice on the graph, the initial value on the graph is 10 also. So the answer to that is that you should agree with Georgia because it is a linear function. It simply has a negative rate of change. Though negative, it is still constant. And here's a big hint. So we talked about Mr. Slope Guy. Well, Mr. Slope Guy, there's four kinds of slope. There's positive, there's negative, there's zero, and there's undefined, the straight up and down. The only one of these slopes that is not a function, it's not a linear function, is the undefined slope because in, if you have an undefined slope, you'll have x values that repeat, which makes it a non-function, all right? So the last question you had to do on this one was to create a nonlinear function equation. All right, so let's take a look at what that says. All right, let's get you back where you were. All right. And you were to create a nonlinear function an equation that is not linear and justify your answer. All you have to do to create a nonlinear function is put an exponent on the independent variable. Right? So uh, any, any function that has an exponent with the x variable is not linear. All right? Some examples of that is y equal x squared, y equal 2x cubed, y equal 2x squared, y equal x squared plus 1. All these are nonlinear. And here's your big hint. Any exponent causes the rate of change to vary, and when the rate of change varies, it's nonlinear. The homework when you're done with this is going to be 87, 88. All right? So now let's take a look at the independent practice section. All right. For independent practice, we have two functions. They tell you to graph each pair of functions on the same grid using the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right? And then we're going to answer these questions, right? Questions are, are the functions linear or nonlinear? Do the functions have the same or different rates of change in initial values? And how can you describe graphs or other pairs of linear functions with the same similarities and difference in the rates of change in initial values? So I've done that for you, and we're going to answer both A and B, right? So the first one we do is graph them, right? So the first pair is y equal x plus 1 and y equal 2x plus 1. Notice that they both start at plus 1 because that is the initial value. Then 1 goes up. The bottom line here, uh, the less steep line is y equal x plus 1. And the steeper line is y equal 2x plus 1. All you do is substitute those values in and come up with your y output. Right? So let's answer the questions from that. For function pair A, both functions are linear. Both have the same initial value, but the rates of change are different. Lines with the same initial value, but different rates of change start at the same place on a graph. However, they'll have a different steepness. Another little hint, slope is simply a measure of the steepness of a line. All right, let's look at function pair B. Here we have y equal x plus 3 and y equal x plus 4. Both independent variables of x have the hidden coefficient of 1. So the rate of change for both of these is going to be 1. They have a different starting point. Look closely at how they graph, right? So the way they graph is we're going to answer these same questions for function pair B. Function pair B, both functions are linear. Both have the same rate of change, however, the initial values are different. Lines that have the same rate of change but different initial values will graph as parallel lines. They are straight lines, they are functions, but they'll never meet, all right? So once you get all this filled out, go ahead and complete your homework pages 87 and 88 uh, in class for tomorrow, and then study for a quiz on Monday. All right, you guys have a good night.